Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah. But I think we should go ahead and get started. We have a quorum. And I realize that this is a team of eight training because we have all eight, but um, they'll be here. It'll, it'll be team of eight. Um, okay. All right. Um, this meeting, the special meeting of the Judson Board of Trustees is hereby called to order at 517 p.m. I'm very pleased that you've taken time to join us this evening in compliance with state government code on open meeting, tonight, uh, tonight's agenda has been appropriately posted. We have established a quorum and I will call roll. Ms. Knoyer? Present. Ms. King? Shatanya King, present. Mr. Macias? Present. Mr. Diaz? Present. Renee Pichelle, present. And to my immediate right is our facilitator, uh, Ms. Patricia, ah, I can't pronounce your last name. Arvanitas, and to my extreme right is our superintendent of schools, Dr. Jeanette Ball. Welcome. Uh, at this time, we have no uh, public comments. Oh, excuse me. Let us stand for an invocation. Dr. Ball. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight to learn, to come together as a team of eight, and to help us to learn how we can better serve our students. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and recite our pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Y'all may be seated now. At this time, I would like to turn uh, this meeting over to Ms. Patricia Arevantes. Arvanitas, close enough. For our team of eight training. All right. Patricia? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Is this, I think I'm on. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, it's good to see you guys. I've talked with all of you on the phone, and I appreciate all the time that you gave me so that I could learn a little bit more about Judson and your expectations. So our purpose tonight is really to set some groundwork for moving forward to create a framework for great governance as we move forward, as we move forward. So we're going to start this evening really um, with the foundation of what good governance is, which is communication. Communication, ground rules, just the way that we want to interact with each other. And so that's what we're going to start with tonight, and then we're going to move into the framework. But first of all, I want to just check in with all of you. I love to do just a one-word check-in, see how you're feeling as we're entering this room, where you are, breathe. We're going to do some work. We're going to do some heavy work, some good work. We're going to have a lot of really great conversation. So I want to just check in and see how you're feeling. One word. And we're going to just start over here with you, Trustee Kanoya. Ready. Ready. <laughs> Thriving. Thriving. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I can't, you know, the math. <laughs> Dr. Ball. Hopeful. Hopeful. Confident. Confident. Trustee Macias. Unsure. Unsure. Excited? All right. All right. And I am feeling honored to be here with you and excited for the prospects of what we have in front of us. Now, as you know, and as I spoke with you on the phone, this is going to be a journey. So we're going to walk through it. And so we're going to start just kind of in true leadership ISD fashion, which is we're just going to have, um, I already did that. So let's go over our objectives first. So we're going to ground ourselves in the good so we can get to great, right? We're going to have, we're going to really talk about the board communications. What does success look like for you? What do you think will hold us back? And that's both personally and as a board and as a team of eight. So we're going to talk about all three of those. And then how do we set our vision and values of our community? So it manifests itself in firm, 
goalposts, both for student outcomes and student experience guardrails, or those kind of, the values are those guardrails and our vision is really a part of that goal structure. So that's what our objectives overall for this training is. And so I just wanna go back to talking a little bit about what I found in our, in my interviews and in reading your board operating procedures and looking through. And so I gave you this kind of synopsis so you could look at that. And so I asked you guys, each one of you, how you would measure success, how you, what you most wanted just in ISD, not the board, but just in ISD to accomplish and how you would measure that success. And so we have a couple of consensus points that there should be a focus on equity and excellence. That we are proud of the work that is happening in Judson ISD, but we want to be the best. We want it to be a place where every single Judson ISD student can thrive, right? And so I heard that from all of you as we talk, some form of excellence and equity, and what does that look like, and what, how do we measure that, right? And so those are the decision points. What does it actually mean? What does equity mean in a school district? What does excellence mean in a school district? Is it just academic excellence or do we wanna have experiential excellence as well? And what does that look like? And that's all part of how we'll walk through this goal setting uh, framework. So, and then the measurables. How are we measuring and what data are we using to measure that? That was also some things that you all kind of talked about. And then I asked you, what did you want from the board? What did you most want the board to accomplish? And how will you measure your success as a board and as a team of eight? And so the consensus points that we came up with is that we wanted to be able to communicate and collaborate, collaborate effectively. So what does that look like? What does it look like to be able to have dialogue and discussion and, deba and debate that is constructive? that actually moves the board forward and creates the conditions for Dr. Ball to be successful, for Dr. Ball and her team to be successful. So that's, that's a, 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 a consensus point that I heard from all of you. I also heard that you wanted to center students, that centering students in your decision making is a priority for all of you, which we believe that should be the center because really, why are we here, right? We are here so that we can make sure our kids can thrive. So in order for them to thrive, we need to know what they can do and what they know. And so that's what we're gonna set this framework around. And then supporting Dr. Ball, creating the conditions for success. Now, we talk a little bit about creating those conditions. What does that look like? That's not just blind over, or, uh, uninformed oversight. That's actually where we're going to work together with Dr. Ball so that we, she has very clear goalposts. She knows the path she has to take and she implements the strategy to get there and you allow her to do that work and measure targets and benchmarks along the way. That's effective and balanced governance. And that's the best way to support your leadership team. And in fact, we now have research that shows that boards who build this framework and effectively set goals, create a pathway, have measurables for those boards. Good evening. Hello. Sorry. Actually do better. Their students do better. We have improved outcomes. So that's an exciting part of this framework. And then once again is how do we have meaningful conversations about policy? So board members are policy makers. So how are you using policy to shift the way our children experience school and how successful they are? So that's an important part. So how do we talk about policy in a constructive way? And then again, the focus on equity, which I heard over and over, both for your board internally and relationally and for your students. And so the decision points are, you know, are you willing to set smart goals about student performance? And what does that look like? What are the measurables? What, do you, what is important to your community? And then how does the board ground equity into policy? What does that look like when we do that? And then what will the board's goals be? And what will their guardrail process be? And then how will this create a cycle of evaluation? A 
cycle of accountability. And when we think about a cycle of accountability, we think about who, who should be on that circle. If that's a circle and a cycle of accountability, who do you think should be on that circle? All of us. All of you. The board, the superintendent, so the, board, the staff. The, the staff or the leadership team, right? Who else? Teachers. Teachers. Students. Students. Parents. Parents. OK. So if we were to, yes, you're right, all of those. So we would break it down into four different ways, right? If we have the board, mm -hmm. and you have one employee, mm -hmm. the board has one employee, so your superintendent, mm -hmm. right? The community who elects you, who holds you accountable, who you are accountable to, to the promise of education, and our students, right? Because our students are always a part of these conversations. So how are we making sure that when you pass a policy, it empowers a superintendent to move the needle for kids, right? So you have a policy, it moves, it empowers the student, the superintendent, she deploys a implementation plan that gets to students, then how do we close that feedback loop to make sure students are actually feeling the results of that policy? So that's part of the accountability system, and that's why we include students. The vision and values lives with your community. So when we think about that, vision and values for a school district are, are for those who live in the school district, right? They live here. They will be here. Now, Dr. Ball may be here forever, <laughs> right? But sometimes superintendents don't stay. And so school districts have to live beyond their leader. Mm -hmm. They have to create the vision and values of your community, and those can be created in a governance framework, and that completes the evaluation. Your community drives your policy, which drives your superintendent, which gets your classrooms and your students. And so we're gonna create that cycle so that it is very clear. So that's part of this. And so then we talked about what, what the board was doing that was working. And you guys were very, um, you, you felt like everybody really centered students, that there was a sense of unity in the board, that there was communication, that there were things that, that were working but maybe needed to be tweaked a little bit and pushed on to make sure they continue to work. Um, and so what was not working was are you using discussion effectively? is discussion, you know, we can have discussion, we can have differences, we can have dialogue. They don't have to be a battleground, right? It has to move, it has to be for a reason. And that reason needs to be part of your board work. So creating that process is important um, so that the board is balanced. So right now, it felt like maybe the board was moving a little bit out of balance and then is the evaluation cycle, is that evaluation cycle built to support the superintendent, which we talked about, and are there, that, are there some interpersonal issues that we can, we can create a space to address and talk so that you guys can work and together as a team? Um, and so that's kind of what we've talked about, and that's what came out of a lot of the work that we've done. And so, through this next six meetings that we're gonna have, and maybe a little bit more depending how things go, that's what we're gonna talk about. That's what we're gonna do. And at the end of that, we will have a framework to share with our community that shows this is where we're going and this is how we're gonna get here and it's informed by their vision and values. And these are the agreements that we as a board will work together interpersonally, interrelationally, and then we'll have a new set of operating procedures and a new evaluation instrument. So those are the tools that we'll have at the end. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? Anything I missed that you felt like you maybe discussed with me, but we didn't, we didn't get there? <laughs>
No, we will use your, your strategic plan as a grounding. It's already there, um, but we're going to expand on it, and the board will own the goal progress, the goals. The superintendent will own the progress measures, right? Those are the implementation strategies, and we're going to talk all about that. But it should layer very nicely, and we might have to tweak a little bit to get vertical alignment. But no, we're not going to just throw anything out. Um, but I'm sure you're down the path already on, on working on that. Um, so this is just about bringing the board into a space that really creates the condition for that strategy to work. Does that make sense? Any other questions? It's a good question. Yeah. I just want to know, will we, we use this agenda each time uh, that we meet? We'll, we'll have this in front of us, but there'll be different objectives for okay. each meeting. Okay. And so each meeting might have a different agenda based on just what we're going to work on, which piece of the journey we're going to work on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, Trustee Macias. Yes, uh, you said the two um, objectives were new superintendent evaluation? I'm correct? sorry? You said it was going to be a new superintendent evaluation at the one at the end? Well, here? it'll be an evaluation that is based on the framework that we as a team, including Dr. Ball, create. Okay. So it's not her evaluation, but just the evaluation of our board progress? There'll be, a board, there'll be an evaluation that is for the board, and there'll be an evaluation that is for the superintendent. Okay. And what was the other one? I'm sorry? You said there were two points. What was the other point? Two points. I thought you said there were two outcomes that we were looking for. Two objectives. Two objectives. So we'll objectives. have the governance framework, okay. right? And we'll create a cycle of accountability for all of us. That makes sense. Anybody else? Any other questions? Patricia, for clarity, the structure how we have four meetings. I'm sorry, I'm going to move closer to you. Well, the structure how we have four meetings. I guess the flow of those meetings as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. So there'll be all aspects of that are going to be a part of the. So once we start to get this framework in place, we'll have a monitoring calendar, we'll have board reports, we'll have agenda reviews that are based on that. All of this will come together. And really what we're thinking about is, look, you know, we all have patterns that we live by, right? And boards are no different than anybody else. So when we have patterns that that perpetuate, that continue to move and move and move, but we're not really seeing a shift, and our outcomes, we're not seeing a shift in what we want to happen, then we probably need to change the pattern, right? So you wouldn't, you know, if you wanted a new, a cup of coffee, you wouldn't take a cup of tea and just pour stuff in it. You'd pour the tea out, rinse the cup, cup out, and then pour a cup of coffee. So that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to create a new cup of coffee, and we're going to eliminate, we're going to change some of the patterns. And in order to do that, we're going to do a little mindset work, we're going to make sure we have a lot of information and some tools. And that's how we'll create new patterns that are going to help create the conditions for our district for our children to thrive, even more than they're doing now. Because that's the goal, right? And, and I think that's a, a good question to ask. If our expectations are that we create a district that is a space where all the children can thrive in Judson ISD, where they can be highly successful, they can reach their boldest dreams, they can have any job they want, they can do whatever they want to do, if that's the expectation, then we have to create the pathway to get there. And while your superintendent can create the strategies, the board and the community owns the goalposts, right? Because, and the reason we talk about it in that way is because those goalposts need to last way beyond any one single leader way beyond any one single board member. They need to be cemented into the values and vision of this district. And I think they already are in many ways. So we're going to just lift them up, frame them, and create board work around that. Does that make sense? Any questions? One last question. One last question. I'm going to stay over here because I can't hear you very well. So will you also help us create Absolutely. And they kind of have a respectful way of checking how we operate. Yes. 
and we have a very clear rubric. And before, you know, I think that's an important part of the evaluation cycle is no board should be evaluating a superintendent if they have never evaluated themselves. So what does it look like to self-evaluate yourselves as board members? Because it is your job. It is your, you are the genesis of transformation. It is your job to create the conditions for your superintendent to be successful for kids. So you have to evaluate yourself on that process. And so we'll be, there'll be a very clear rubric that we'll follow and we'll do a pre, we'll do a benchmarking. And then we're gonna put a lot of things in place and you'll see that rubric shift. You'll see that score shift. Okay, make sense? Okay, all right. So as we move forward, I think we have to ground ourselves in, we talked about this, and we talked about that. So this is our agenda for today. And as you can see, we're gonna focus very much on the why right now. So we're gonna focus a little bit on the why, and I'll tell you why. Oh, good, welcome. Just in time. So I want us to understand our why. And so I want to just start with my own story, and then we're going to break you guys up, and we're going to do uh, something that's called a conocimiento. And I may not have said that perfectly with the accent. Was it close? Okay. Uh, but I think your journey, your lived experience, the way you engage in this work all inform the decisions that you make in this seat. And so if we don't share that, if we haven't had those conversations with each other and shared that, then we don't have a full understanding of why you're making these decisions or why you're passionate about children or why you want literacy to be the number one goal, right? We don't have that if we don't have a real grounding. And so we're gonna do an exercise here in a minute um, where we're gonna break up and we're really gonna spend some time learning each other's why. Um, so I wanted to just share my own story just so you can see a little bit of what's happening and why I'm here. So I was raised <clears throat> in a small town in uh, Nebraska and my parents were a barber and a preschool teacher. So we had uh, we had education, we had singing, we had a lot of things. So my first memory of school was of joy. It was of singing because my mom was a preschool teacher and she taught in our basement. So I remember hearing that and then I went to her preschool and so I expected my school, my public education, uh, to go to sound like that, to sound like the basement. <laughs> And uh, it didn't always, it didn't always sound like the basement, but I still had a lot of joy. But what I didn't find is a lot of opportunity. It was very limited, it wasn't, and that experience colored my, the way I viewed education. It colored it, and it really wasn't until I got here to this beautiful city, San Antonio, where I got to go be the first one in my family to go to college. And I picked Trinity University because, one, they had a really pretty picture on the cover of their brochure. <laughs> and true, I'd never seen it, never been out of the state of Nebraska. And the woman who was at the college fair was really nice to me. And they gave me some money to go to school. So those were my three reasons. I went to Trinity University. And when I came to San Antonio, I had a whole different lived experience, right? I, I got to see this incredible richness of culture and ethnicity and race and ideas that were not for, they were not there in my small town in Nebraska, but they were here and it, it spurred me to ask questions differently, to learn about other people, to want to activate, right? To change things that I saw were not happening. And so that journey has really informed my work in education because I see oftentimes, you know, and I have my own daughter who went to public schools in Dallas, and I watched 
her go to a magnet school, which was a great school. And it was the absolute perfect fit for her. She needed it. But it was vastly different than the school down the street. And so when I was working with parents, we started to see the inequities in our children's education and so wanted to address those and figure out ways to do that. And, why, and that's why we've, I've gone into this work. And I believe that school boards can make the difference. They can shift the way we look because as a parent, we, we elect you. We look to you for the promise of our education, to bring the joy to our kids. Right? We want our kids to have the joy so they can thrive. So that's what we're building out. So that is my story. That's my why. Right? And so what did you learn about me? What did you learn about me in that? I'm sorry? Value education. You care about um, equity for all students. Care about equity. Where you started, and the picture that you had of education was much different when you actually were in uh, school yourself. Right. right. And you're from uh, Nebraska. And I'm from <laughs> Nebraska. From a small little town. Would it be Humboldt? No, it's Fremont. Oh, OK. <laughs> but anything else? So do you, do you see the? the benefit in knowing my story before we do this work together. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. right. So you see kind of a little bit of inkling, and it was a very short story, right? We didn't spend, we're going to spend a little bit more time with each other. But that little inkling gives you a viewpoint into my values, mm -hmm. my vision, perhaps how I want to make decisions, right? And so that that storytelling is so critical. And we oftentimes, especially in a world as chaotic as we are living in right now, right? And you all have lives and jobs and this, and you're clearly being asked to make decisions that are, let's face it, life or death. And so this is, we don't always take the time to get to know each other, to humanize each other. And so we're going to do that tonight. And that's going to be our first kind of foray into our governance shift on our governance journey. So we're going to do, and I think this might be a good time to go into closed. OK. All right. So at 5.44 PM, we will go into closed session now.